Yuka, Yuka, and Yuka once again. What's up, 23% Nation? This is your man, Coach D. Today, I'm back with Vegetable of the Day, the one and only Yuka. So maybe, just maybe, you prefer to spell Yuka Y-U-C-A. Maybe you think Yuka is the same thing as cassava. Or maybe, just maybe, you confuse Yuka with a potato and or a yam, right? Well, guys, whatever the case may be, please listen and watch on. Why? Because we're about to dive just a little deeper into the wonderful world of yucca. All right, first up, a little bit of background information. 23% Nation, here is a very, very popular question. Coach D, what in the world is yucca root? Well, guys, let's dive deep. Yucca, notice it is spelled with a double C, also known as cassava, yucca, or Brazilian arrowroot, is a type of shrub native to South America. It is often cultivated in tropical regions for its starchy root, which is considered a dietary stable for an estimated half billion people around the world. In fact, after corn and maize, yucca root is considered the third largest source of carbohydrates in the tropics. Wow, so guys, who knew yucca root was so popular and so important to so many different people? So there we have it, guys. A little bit of background information about the one and only yucca root. All right, more background information. Available in both bitter and sweet varieties, the yucca root taste is often compared to potatoes, and it also has a stringy texture reminiscent of a pumpkin. Interesting. So I guess they're trying to let us know that if you've never had yucca before, well, just imagine <laughs> a potato and a pumpkin combined together. <laughs> It's usually boiled, fried, or ground up into different flours and powders used for baking. That's right. So, take a look at the picture. For those of us who want to know what ground yucca flour or powder looks like, there you have it. All right, more background information. By 1492, yucca root was already a stable in the diets of the indigenous people of South America, Mesoamerica and the Caribbean and is often featured in many forms of indigenous art from paintings to ceramics. Interesting. Following the European occupation of these regions, consumption of yucca root became more widespread and Cuba even began mass producing cassava bread. Interesting. So take a look at the picture. Doesn't it look delicious, right? So for those of us who are wondering, what in the world does cassava bread look like? Well, guys, now you know. Also, if you look closely, you can see that the cassava bread is actually being accompanied by an herb. Now, if you can name that herb, you may just receive a special prize. So there we have it. <laughs> a little bit of background information about the one and only yucca. All right, more background information. Yucca was later introduced to other areas such as Africa and Asia by European traders and has since become an important ingredient around the world. Today, Nigeria tops the charts as one of the biggest producers of yucca root followed by Thailand and Brazil. Interesting. So for those of us that are wondering where in the world is Nigeria, well guys, Take a look at the picture, right? Nigeria is a country that is located in Africa, or shall I say it's located in the continent of Africa, right? It borders the Atlantic Ocean, right? And it's around the northern kind of western part of the continent. <laughs> So there we have it, guys. A little more background information about the one and only yucca. All right, now it's time for a few fun facts. Keep in mind that yucca root is unrelated to the yucca plant, 
which is a genus of perennial shrubs and trees that produces white yucca flower clusters as well as yucca fruit. That's right. So for those of us that are wondering what in the world does the yucca plant look like? Well, there you have it. As you can see, it produces beautiful white flowers. Many of these plants are used medicinally and also consumed in many different dishes. Wow. So, ladies and gentlemen, next time you eat yucca, just know that it probably did not come from the yucca plant. That's right. So there we have it. A few fun facts about the one and only yucca root. Okay, more fun facts. Although not commonly used in holistic medicine, yucca root fits right into an Ayurvedic diet, which encourages eating with the seasons and filling your diet with plenty of fresh fruits and vegetables to support better health. Now, for those of us who are maybe a little more interested in learning about the Ayurvedic diet, apparently it encompasses six different tastes. That's right. And notice that they all come from plant foods. So I'll go in a clockwise direction, starting with sour. Then we have pungent, astringent, bitter, salty, and of course, sweet. So there you have it. If you are at all interested in participating in an Ayurvedic diet, just remember to make sure you cover all six tastes. And how can you do that? It's easy. Eat more yucca root. <laughs> all right, guys, more fun facts. Now, in the beginning, I asked a simple question, which is, or maybe I made a statement, that basically pitted yucca versus cassava. Is there a difference? What's the difference? Are they the same? Well, let's find out. Yucca root and cassava are actually the same plant. Wow, who knew? But the terms yucca root or yucca are more commonly used in the United States and in Spanish. Interesting. So guys, the next time you order yucca root, you can say cassava. Or the next time you order cassava, just understand that you will be getting yucca root. So I guess that now solves the mystery we now know that yucca root and cassava are basically the same thing, but with a different name. Okay, more fun facts. Now, here is another popular question because lots of people are eating yucca, right? So you probably wanna know, where can I find yucca? <laughs> well, let's discuss it. You can usually find yucca in the produce section of your local grocery store, right alongside other tubers, or shall we say root vegetables, such as sweet potatoes and of course, yams. In some cases, you may need to expand your search and check out some Latin or Asian specialty markets to find it. It can also sometimes be found pre-peeled and cut in the freezer section as well. Be sure to look for it under its other names, such as yucca with a single C or cassava. Nice. So guys, take a look at this picture. Now, as you can clearly see, they placed the yucca right next to the other root vegetables. I see sweet potatoes. I see white potatoes. I see a little bit of ginger, right? <laughs> Along with tomatoes and maybe a guava maybe some squash, right? Acorn squash. <laughs> wow. So guys, the next time you are in your local grocery store, definitely hang out in the produce section to locate it. Or if you prefer frozen yucca, just go to the freezer aisle. So there we have it. A few more fun facts about the one and only yucca. All right. More fun facts. Because it's so popular, and I guess because it's so delicious, a lot of people probably want to know, right? How do you, how in the world do you cook yucca? <laughs> well, there are plenty of delicious yucca recipes out there, from soups and stews to custards and cakes. Wow, yucca cake, interesting. It can be used in many of the same ways as regular potatoes. So, my dear people, 
what this simply means is that probably you can substitute yucca for potatoes. Fried yucca is often used to make yucca root fries, chips, or fritters, but it can also be boiled and mashed for a healthier twist on mashed potatoes. That's right. So guys, if the recipe calls for potatoes, but you don't have any, go ahead. Use the yucca, use the cassava, it'll suffice. So there we have it. More fun facts about the one and only yucca. Okay, more fun facts. In addition to fresh yucca, you can also easily find cassava flour, which is made from yucca root powder in the baking section of most grocery stores. This popular gluten-free alternative to regular flour works great for baked goods such as cookies, cakes, brownies, and crepes. Wow, who knew that cassava root was so versatile? That's right. So not only can it be eaten as a root vegetable, similar to potatoes, but then we can also use its flour to make things like cookies, cakes, brownies. Yummy. So now that I'm starting to think about it, maybe I will switch over to a little bit of cassava flour. <laughs> so there we have it, guys. More fun facts about the one and only yucca root. Okay, guess what? More fun facts. Tapioca flour or tapioca starch is another type of flour made from yucca, but it's made from starch of the root, while cassava flour is made from the entire root. Tapioca flour works well for thickening liquids and making homemade puddings. Yummy! Now, for those of us that are interested in knowing what tapioca flour looks like, well, guys, take a look at the picture, right? There you have it. It's white, it's powdery, it's fine, looks amazing. So, more fun facts about the one and only yucca. Okay, more fun facts. Wow. Arrowroot is another popular ingredient made from a blend of yucca with other roots, which is usually added to biscuits, jellies, and broths. Interesting. So, maybe, just maybe, you have heard of arrowroot before, or maybe not right? <laughs> well, just understand that if you ever come across arrowroot, that basically it's yucca. <laughs> okay, so there we have it, guys. We now know exactly what arrowroot is and where it comes from. All right, it's time for the not-so-fun facts. Get ready. Proper preparation is key when consuming yucca root. The roots of the yucca plant contain a substance that can trigger the production of toxins such as cyanide when not processed correctly. Interesting. Improper cooking can cause yucca root side effects such as vomiting, stomach pain, dizziness, and headaches. So guys, this may shock a lot of you. Hmm. Who knew that yucca was directly tied to cyanide, which unfortunately is a poison? That's right. So you may want to be careful as to how much yucca root you consume in a city. So not only do we need to watch out for the cyanide, right? We also need to watch out for the side effects. So guys, be careful. More not so fun facts. Opt for sweet varieties over bitter whenever possible, and be sure to peel yucca. Cut it and cook it thoroughly before enjoying. Some research also shows that soaking it for 48 to 60 hours before cooking can significantly cut down on the potential for toxicity. Interesting. Now, little did I know that there were basically two different types of yucca. We have sweet and bitter. Now, if you're interested in knowing the differences, well, here we go. Sweet yucca, the bark is thin, it softens quickly, its pulp is soft. When cooking, it retains its color. Nice. Now let's talk about the bitter yucca. The bark is thick, it takes a long time to soften, its pulp is pink. When cooked, it takes a yellowish color. Interesting. So, for all of my yucca lovers, right? <laughs> the next time you eat yucca, maybe you should kind of take a little time to figure out if you're eating sweet yucca or bitter yucca. 
So there we have it. More not so fun facts about the one and only Yuka Root. Okay, more not so fun facts. Yuka Root also contains anti nutrients, which are compounds that can interfere with the absorption of certain vitamins and minerals. Not good. For most people who eat yuca root in moderation, this shouldn't be a major concern, but it can increase the risk of nutritional deficiencies for populations who use it as a dietary stable. That's right. So, 23% nation, listen up. A lot of you are probably shocked by this information, right? You're in awe. I get it. Why? Because here, I'm professing how wonderful yucca root is, but little did I know it contains anti-nutrients, right? So as you can see in the picture, I'm letting you know which anti-nutrients are in yucca. We have lectins, we have oxalates, and we also have phytates. Now, as the text says, for the most part, if you're eating yucca in moderation, you probably have absolutely nothing to worry about. However, if you're the type of person that's eating yucca all day, every day, then you may be at risk. So there we have it. More not so fun facts about the one and only yucca. Okay, it's now time to dive into the 520 rule. Ladies and gentlemen, the 520 rule is all about food labels. That's right. It's a guide. It's a guide that helps us understand whether or not a food or beverage item is a good source or not a good source of any particular nutrient. Now, when we talk about the 520 rule, ultimately we're talking about percent daily value, abbreviated percent DV. Now let's take a look at our sample food label. As you can see, it is divided into three main parts, purple slash pink, yellow, and blue. So let's go part by part by part. First up, let's discuss the percent daily value column. Now, as you can see, percent DV is basically represented as a percentage. That's right, with a low end of 0% and a high end of 100%. Now, there are some very rare cases where a food item may offer percent DV in excess of 100%. However, that is rare. Most times it'll fall between zero and 100. Now let's take a look at the yellow part of the <clears throat> food label. Guys, the yellow part does a really good job at highlighting those nutrients, which unfortunately do the body a lot of harm. Why? Because these nutrients promote sickness, illness, and disease. That's why it says limit these nutrients. So, the next time you come across a food or beverage item that contains saturated fat, trans fat, cholesterol, and sodium, you probably want to make sure that the percent DV for those nutrients is as close to 0% as possible. Now, let's transition to the blue section. The blue section does a really good job at highlighting those nutrients which do just the opposite of the yellow nutrients. Rather than promote sickness, illness, and disease, they promote wellness and health within the body temple. So the next time you eat or drink something, just make sure that the dietary fiber, the vitamin A, vitamin C, calcium, and iron, that the percent DVs for those nutrients are as close to 100% as possible. That's why it says get enough of these nutrients. Now, I understand that some people prefer general information while other people prefer specific information. So I want to satisfy both parties. So for those of us who love generalities, well guys, let's take a look at the quick guide to percent DV. It says 5% or less is low and 20% or more is high. So at this time, let's now be a little more specific. Ladies and gentlemen, if a food or beverage item offers 0% to 9% DV of any particular nutrient, then that food or beverage item is not a good source of that nutrient. Next, if a food or beverage item offers 10% to 19% DV, then that food or beverage item is a good source of that particular nutrient. Lastly, if a food or beverage item offers 20% DV or greater, 
then that food or beverage item is considered an excellent source of that particular nutrient. So there we have it, guys, the ins and outs about the 520 rule. All right, now that we've gone over the 520 rule, let's now dive into the nutrition facts of the one and only yucca. So for today's lecture, we're going to say that a single serving is one cup of yucca root. That's it, guys, one cup, or we can say approximately 206 grams. So here's what we're going to get in a single serving, one cup, 330 calories, 78.4 grams of carbohydrates. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is quite a large amount of carbs in a single serving. So for those of us that are on a ketogenic diet, low carb diet, keto diet, right? You probably want to stay away from yucca. Why? Because it's going to exceed your 50 grams of carbs per day quota. That's right. Also, 2.8 grams of protein. Amazing. And it's plant protein at that. So you know what? That means that this protein does not come with cholesterol, which is always a good thing. Now, a lot of people may say, well, Coach D, what's the primary benefit of plant protein? Well, guys, I'm happy to say that plant protein does a lot of good things for the body. For instance, it helps your hair grow, it strengthens your immune system, and it also helps to build lean meat muscle tissue. Next up, 0 0.6 grams of fat. And look at this, a whopping 3.7 grams of dietary fiber. Now, if you've been following Coach D for a while, you already know that Coach D considers fiber nature's plumber. Why? Because it keeps your tubes clean, specifically your arteries and your colon. When it comes to your arteries, fiber helps to remove excess cholesterol and any type of plaque buildup. It also helps to clean out your colon, or we can use the term large intestine. What does it do there? Well, it helps to remove excess toxins and excess stuck waste. That's right. Moving on. Vitamin C comes in at 71% DV, excellent source, manganese, 40% DV, excellent source, potassium, 16% DV, good source, folate, 14% DV, good source, thiamine, 12% DV, good source, magnesium, 11% DV, good source, copper, 10% DV, good source, Vitamin B6, niacin, both coming in at 9% DV, not a good source. Riboflavin, phosphorus, each coming in at 6% DV, not a good source. And lastly, our vitamin K and zinc, each coming in at only 5% DV, not a good source. So there we have it, guys. We now know the nutrition facts about the one and only yucca root. Okay. Now that we've gone over the 520 rule and the nutrition facts, it's now time for us to cover the health benefits. But before we do, I want to offer you this. Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about the five, I'm sorry, not the 520 rule. <laughs> we've already discussed that. Let's talk about the principle of cause and effect, which basically states that every cause has its effect and every effect has its cause. There really is no such thing as chance and or luck. In other words, everything happens for a reason. That being said, I'm here to let you know that if you are currently healthy, well, guess what? Health is the effect. What's more important is that we focus on the causes. And it's the same thing with disease. If you have a disease, then unfortunately, the disease is the effect what we must focus on are the causes of the disease, right? So rather than focus on disease, let's focus on health. Let's focus on wellness. So as I cover the health benefits, I'm going to let you know the effect, right? But more importantly, I'm going to let you know the cause, which basically are the phytonutrients found in the yucca. Now, some people prefer to use the word medicine. So whether you want to use the word phytonutrient or medicine, they're basically the same thing. So health benefit number one is that it protects against oxidative stress. 
right, caused by free radicals, right? So what's the cause? What's the phytonutrient? What's the medicine? Well, here's the good news. Yucca contains antioxidants, vitamin C, and manganese. That's right. And basically, all of these help to deactivate the free radicals, thus protecting us against oxidative stress. Health benefit number two, supports immune function. Perfect. So, what are the phytonutrients? What's the cause? What are the medicines? Well, antioxidants and vitamin C. Health benefit number three, promotes skin health. Amazing. So, what's the cause? Well, vitamin C. Health benefit number four, relieves arthritis symptoms. Amazing. So, what's the cause? What's the medicine? What are the phytonutrients? Well, antioxidants and manganese. And health benefit number five, it has a low glycemic index. Now, for those of us that are not quite sure what low glycemic index means, well, guys, when we talk about glycemic index, basically that refers to the effect that certain foods have on blood sugar levels and corresponding insulin levels. That's right. So when you eat certain foods, well, it causes a spike. When you eat other foods, it maintains a proper level, right? So what's the cause? Well, number one, you could have fiber, as we've already discussed. Now, here are some things that you may want to consider. Glycemic index of just 46, that's it, right? Versus a boiled potatoes have a glycemic index of 78, and white rice has a glycemic index of 73. So when you compare the glycemic index of yucca at 46 to white potatoes of 78 and white rice at 73, you can clearly see that the yucca, because of its fiber and because of its other phytonutrients, will have a much better effect on your blood glucose levels and corresponding insulin levels. So there we have it, guys. Five amazing health benefits from the one and only yucca root. All right, it's time to talk about Food, but in particular plant foods now yes I went to our website for everything vegan so say hello to forksoverknives.com by the way there is a movie entitled forks over knives which I highly recommend you watch sooner rather than later so as usual I went to the website forksoverknives.com and I did just a little bit of research and I came across two amazing vegan yucca dishes that I want to share with you right now. So the first one is entitled Crispy Oven Baked Yucca Fries. Take a look at that picture. Looks scrumptious, yes. The second recipe is yucca coffee cake with walnuts and orange zest. Look at that picture. Makes your mouth water, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> now guys, if you are at all interested in making these dishes, all you have to do is click on the description box. Why? Because I'm providing you with a direct link to both recipes. Now, when you click on the link, you're gonna find some amazing information, such as cooking instructions, an ingredient list, pictures, and maybe even a video. So, do me a favor. Click on the description box, click on the link, make the dish, taste a dish come back to the video and share your thoughts so there we have it not one but two amazingly delicious vegan yucca recipes from forksoverknives.com all right 23 percent nation i hear you a lot of you say well coach d thanks for the fun facts the not so fun facts and the nutrition facts but what i really want to know is when should i eat more yucca well, guys, if that's your question, then I got to tell you that the best day to eat more yucca is Nature Day. What, Coach D? Nature Day? Oh, yes. Good old Nature Day. Ladies and gentlemen, Nature Day happens to be the first day of the 23% challenge. Now, guys, I get it. Some people have been living under a rock. 
some people have never heard about the 23% challenge. After all, we are still under quarantine, right? <laughs> well, my dear people, if you don't know anything about the challenge, allow me to explain. The 23% challenge is a monthly seven day wellness program that is designed to help improve your health, your wealth, your relationships, and it also helps to save good old planet Earth. Now, there are two things that you really, really need to know about the challenge. Number one, it's monthly, meaning every month, January through December. And number two, it's only seven days long. As a matter of fact, it's the first seven days of every month, the first all the way through the seventh. Now, being that Nature Day is the first day of the challenge, that simply means that Nature Day is the first day of every month. That's it. So, whether it's September 1st, October 1st, or November 1st, it's always Nature Day. Okay, 23% Nation. A lot of you say, well, Coach D, Nature Day sounds like fun, but I want to know more about it. So, Coach D, what is Nature Day all about? Well, guys, in a nutshell, Nature Day is all about eating more plants and drinking more water. That's it. Plants and water. Right? Now, for some people, that can be easy. For others, it can be extremely difficult. So, I want to address both parties. So, let's talk about it being difficult for some people. Guys, if eating more plants, or shall I say eating only plants and drinking only water is difficult, well, you may want to try it before 12 p.m. That way, after 12 p.m., you can eat and drink whatever you want. If before 12 p.m. doesn't work for you, then what about after 12 p.m.? That way, before 12 p.m., you can eat and drink whatever you want, right? Now, for those of us who think it's easy to only eat plants and drink only water, well, I invite you to become a 3% vegan. Now, that's any person, man, woman, or child, who only eats plant foods and drinks only water only one day out of an entire month. Next up is a 10% vegan. That could be the same person, man, woman, or child, who only eats plant foods and drinks only water only three days out of an entire month. Next up is a 17% vegan. That's any person, man, woman, or child, who only eats plant foods and drinks only water only five days out of an entire month. And lastly is the ultimate, 23% vegan. Now, technically, that's what Coach D considers himself to be. And so that simply means that I only eat from the five food groups of plant foods, right? For the first seven days of every month. So that means that fruits, vegetables, spices, and herbs, whole grains, nuts and seeds, and legumes are my daily diet for the first seven months. I'm sorry, the first seven days of every month. And of course, I only drink water. So there we have it. We now know exactly what Nature Day is all about. Okay, now 23% Nation, some of you are coming around, but some of you may still have questions, and I understand, because a lot of you are going to want to know, well, Coach D, should I participate in Nature Day? After all, who is it for? Well, guys, let's talk about it. So maybe, just maybe, you've been stricken with the big four, meaning heart disease, cancer, obesity, and diabetes. Maybe you have skin issues such as eczema, psoriasis, pimples, blackheads, and whiteheads, right? Maybe you have digestive issues such as irritable bowel syndrome, leaky gut syndrome. Maybe you're constipated. Maybe you have Crohn's disease or maybe you have diarrhea, right? Or maybe you're dealing with some mental issues, such as being bipolar. Maybe you're depressed. Maybe you're sad all the time. Maybe you're mad all the time. Or maybe you just can't focus, right? So guys, if you have any of these physical or mental conditions, and maybe, just maybe, you're tired of the doctor's visits. Maybe you're tired of the surgeries and the <clears throat> and the physical procedures, right? Maybe you're tired of the doctor's visits and, and the prescription medications. I get it. I understand it. And so maybe, just maybe, you're looking for a natural, holistic approach for your healing. 
well guys nature day is definitely for you maybe you're the type of person who wants to change your physical appearance maybe you want to lose an inch from your hips and your waist or maybe you want to add on some lean mean muscle tissue well you may want to try our vegan lean and vegan bulk programs or maybe just maybe you want to transition from the standard american diet to a more whole food plant-based diet because you heard it was great for the environment well guys it's easy eat more plants so now we know exactly who nature day is for all right it's time for coach these tips 23 percent nation i'm here to offer you assistance and advice why because i want your nature day to be successful so tip number one go to your local grocery store now when you get there you're gonna go to one of three places maybe two or maybe all three who knows so here's what i'm talking about specifically the produce section the freezer aisle and the canned good aisle why those three places well you're going to find your fresh produce in the produce section. You're going to find your frozen plant foods in the freezer aisle. And you're going to find your canned plant foods in the canned good aisle. Now, a lot of people want to know, Coach D, what's best, fresh, frozen, or canned? Well, guys, I'll answer that question this way. Number one is fresh. Number two is frozen. And actually, it's a very close second. And number three, dead last, is canned. Now, the reason why I'm putting canned plant foods in dead last is simply because of the fact that when you take a plant from the ground and you put it in a can, well, there's a lot of processing involved. And during all this processing, a lot of toxins are added and a lot of the plant's nutrients are destroyed. So it is very possible that you may end up eating more toxins than you do nutrients. So that's why I always put canned plant foods dead last. Tip number two, go visit the prepared dishes section of your local grocery store. So when you're done with the produce section, the freezer aisle and the canned good aisle, walk on over to the prepared dishes section. Now this is where you're gonna find a very large glass counter. You're gonna see food already prepared already cooked underneath the glass counter it's going to be sold by weight and you're going to find someone ready willing and able to serve your prepared food so here's how it works walk over there talk to the person if you don't know what anything is ask them if they have any vegan or plant-based options now if they say yes but you don't quite recognize it don't fret don't worry don't stress ask for a sample it's free 99 if you like it go ahead and buy some maybe start off with half a pound but maybe just maybe you're having friends over for dinner or maybe you're having people over for the game right go ahead get two pounds three pounds four pounds why not five pounds tip number three go visit your local farmers market now the reason why I advise this is simply because there are a lot of people who prefer organic non-gmo plant foods so guess what farmers markets are ideal for those types of people why because farmers markets pretty much only cater to the non-gmo organic plant food market that's right and don't be surprised if the produce is cheaper than your local grocery store now one of the reasons why it may be cheaper is simply because farmers markets cater to local farmers that's right so the food doesn't have to travel as far as it would if it were coming from another state another country or maybe even from overseas so if you want to save a little bit of money and you want non-gmo organic plant foods then farmers markets are definitely the place to be tip number four go visit your local vegan restaurant and don't just visit sit down and eat that's right now the reason why I suggest eating at a vegan restaurant for two reasons number one vegan restaurants do a really good job at hiring vegan chefs who basically know exactly how to cook plant food so that they retain the majority of their nutrients also they know which plant foods to combine to yield the most nutritious delicious 
dishes. So the next time you go into your local vegan restaurant, tell them Coach D sent you. And tip number five, get a subscription to a vegan meal prep company. Now, I recommend this for those of us who complain that we don't know how to cook plant foods or that we don't have time to cook plant foods. I get it. I understand it. So here's what I say. Let somebody else do the cooking for you, right? So here's how it works. Give them a call. You get the subscription. They make the food. They may even deliver the food. You eat the food. It's just that simple. So there we have it. Five amazing tips to help make your nature day successful. All right. It's time for our question of the day. Coming from yours truly and the rest of the 23% nation, we have inquiry minds, so we want to know, true or false, yucca root and cassava are the same root vegetable. Now, I believe I covered this information earlier in the lecture, so hopefully you got it. If you didn't, that's okay. You can always rewind. Whatever the case, please write your answer in the comment box below. Guys, I want to thank you for watching. I definitely want to thank you for listening. As always, let's eat well, feel well, think well, do well, be well. This is your man, Coach D. Now, before I sign out, I got to ask you to please subscribe, share, comment, and like the video, especially if you love yucca or cassava. And don't forget to use our three-word mantra. It's hashtag eat more plants. As stated earlier, my name is Coach D. I'm signing out, but always remember to take care. God bless and never, ever forget that Coach D loves you.